Hey everybody, it's April. And today I want to talk about why your lower back may be hurting when you plank. So I'm going to start on forearms and then I'm going to switch around a little bit. So um, if you're starting on forearms, wrap your hands around your biceps so you know you have the right distance between your arms. Bring your forearms out in front of you. You can interlace your fingers if you like. I think that makes it a little bit easier. It helps me press down a little bit more, but that's up to you. Pull your shoulders down your back, then lift your upper back, lift your chest, pull in your belly, come up on your toes, shift your weight forward slightly. The timer has begun. And then do all of that again. Press into the floor again, separating your shoulders, pull in your belly, tighten up your glutes, press your heels back. It might be a mistake that I left on my boots. <laughs> I am planking in my garage again because I didn't feel like taking off my overalls. I wasn't thinking about a plank outfit when I put on my wardrobe today, but um, it's nice and cool in my garage. We're already at 30 seconds, and this will help me not have to take everything off. So, sometimes I hear people say they tried planking, but it hurt their lower back. So, more often than not, the reason for that is, is because your form is not correct. And one of the best ways to know what your form looks like is to use a mirror or maybe ask a friend or set up your camera and look at your plank and see what's going on. We're in a minute. I'm just going to keep holding because I'm just chatting away here. <laughs> and so here's what you're looking for. If your hips are sagging like this, that means you have bad form. If your hips are up in the air, that means your form isn't good either. You want to make a nice long line with your plank. So see how I'm actually looking out in front of my fingertips, pulling in my belly. I am constantly pulling in my belly. And that's the thing. A lot of times, if your lower back is dipping or slap, you know, you're getting kind of sloppy, it's because you're not engaging your abs enough. You're not really using those muscles. And a lot of times people are pressing into the floor and their shoulders are up around their ears and they feel like they're hurting in their shoulders and their arms. And that isn't where you should feel your plank. You should be feeling it in your belly the most. So you're actively, actively pulling in your navel. I've said before, we're at two minutes. I'm going to switch to my hands. You want to feel like, you not that you want to feel this way, but it should feel like someone has pushed, punched you in the stomach. So if you switch, you always have to come back to that good form again. So you're looking in your camera or in the mirror, pulling in your belly, pressing your hands into the floor. But one thing to think about is planks shouldn't be painful. Now, it's not, it might be uncomfortable because you're trying to hold for so long and your arms might get a little shaky, but they shouldn't be in pain. And it's the same with your lower back. If you are feeling pain, again, that's your body's signal that there's something wrong and you're probably doing it wrong. And you can always check with your doctor or chiropractor just to see if you have something else. But more than likely, they're going to tell you you need to strengthen your core. And one of the best ways to strengthen your core is with a plank. So it's a vicious little cycle, isn't it? <laughs> We're coming up on three minutes. I'm going to switch to side plank. <clears throat> So if you go into side plank, you can stack your feet. You can bring your top foot in front of you. Stay lifted out of that bottom arm. And I'm really lifting my hips, activating my core. So that's what you're really working on in your plank. And like I said, I know it seems like a vicious cycle that if your core is not strong enough, plank's going to be difficult. And yet one of the best ways to improve your core or is by doing a plank. So you might have to modify. Maybe you do have to come down on your knees. That's okay. You're working. So I would suggest you start in a regular plank. Make sure everything is engaged. Woo, I almost toppled. <laughs> My boot stack may be making a little off balance. Um, and if it's really difficult or you're feeling pain in your lower back, come down on your knees and focus on activating your core again. Okay, we're coming up on four minutes. I guess I'm doing one minute on each side. <laughs> um, but that's that will be your way that you're going to build up plank and build up your core strength. So it's not so much that your goal is to increase your, core, your plank hold time, it's to strengthen your core. And that's one reason why we do plank, is for that core strength. So 
pay attention. Sometimes you'll feel like you have pain in your lower back because you're not because you're not thinking about it. You're not focusing. And you want to focus on engaging those core muscles that that you're pulling in your belly using your abs. And that's going to strengthen your lower back as well and help alleviate that pain. So remember, plank actually will help eliminate lower back pain. It will help prevent it and get rid of it. So chances are, if you plank and it hurts your lower back, then you're doing something wrong. <laughs> so you need to engage, engage, engage. So, you know, I plank almost every day, but I still have to think about it while I'm planking. It's not something that just happens. I mean, it is easier for me now, I, especially if I'm planking for a minute or something, I don't have to give it as much thought. But when I'm holding for five minutes, I have to constantly remind myself, pull in, pull in, pull in your belly. So that's your mantra for today. And another suggestion is to do this a few times a day, especially if you're finding that you need to come down on your knees, that's fine, but try to maybe work in three times a day and, and you will get stronger. Have a great day.